A park ranger stands forward-facing in uniform of a tan flat hat, green sweater, and green trousers. The ranger stands in a mowed, grassy area with leaves on the ground and standing next to a bronze cannon mounted on a two-wheeled carriage. Behind the ranger is a thick, wooded area. Hi everyone, my name is Emily Avery and I'm a ranger here at the Chickamauga and Chattanooga National Military Park. Today I am here on the DeLong Reservation on Missionary Ridge and I am going to be talking a little bit about artillery. And so between today and tomorrow, we're gonna to talk about artillery. Uh, today we're gonna to talk specifically about how you would go about firing a cannon. And then tomorrow, if you come back, we are actually going to make our own miniature versions and talk a little bit more about the physics of these projectiles and how you would have needed to aim and practice a little bit there. So let's go ahead and get started. Uh, we have behind us, this is a 12 pound mountain howitzer. Now to fire a Civil War cannon, you would need a team of eight people. And so four of these people would be stationed around the gun. You would have two back by the limber chest and the limber chest is where they would have stored the ammunition. You would have one person who would be going back and forth between the limber chest and the cannon he was sometimes called the powder monkey. And then you would have the gunner, who was kind of like the team captain. He was gonna be the one that was gonna be aiming the cannon, and he was going to be uh, the one that was stationed right behind the gun here. So in a battle, uh, the first step to firing a cannon, contrary to what a lot of us think, it's not to load it. Because if we just fired this cannon, there's a very good chance that there's still going to be some sparks, some embers in that barrel. And we don't want to load a fresh new powder bag in because this cannon's going to go off before we're ready. So the first thing we're going to need to do is use our sponge rammer. And we're going to use the end that looks like a sponge. And we would get it wet and then we would push it down in the cannon barrel, twist, pull it out, and hopefully extinguish all of those embers so we are ready to load the cannon. Now when we go to load the cannon, we are gonna load it in one fell swoop. We have our powder bag attached to our projectile, and this is gonna be loaded in from the front of the cannon, from the muzzle, and then the other end of our sponge rammer is going to push that ammunition, that powder bag, and the projectile all the way down to the back of the barrel. It's gonna get pushed down all the way back so it's right underneath this hole, this vent, right here. Now, what's gonna happen next is we are gonna have a person back here with a priming wire. They're gonna push it down in this vent right here, and then they take that out, and we will have what's called a friction primer be inserted into this vent. And this, when this lanyard is pulled, is going to be what creates the spark. So kind of like a match on the side of a matchbox. And that's gonna create that spark that ignites that powder bag, which is what makes this cannon fire. That's what pushes that projectile out very, very quickly and with a lot of noise. So this was a pretty complicated process, and this team of eight men could do it if they were really good at what they did in 30 seconds. That's pretty impressive. On November 24th, 1863, during the Battle of Lookout Mountain, there is a Confederate battery on the top of the mountain, Corpett's Georgia Battery, and there is an account from that group of men that say they fire 33 shells. That's a lot of cannon fire in a very short amount of time. Now, these eight men would be working this cannon, would be doing this together, and they would be doing it in a pretty stressful situation. During a battle, battle they are being fired upon, and yet they are still having to work as a team. Their teamwork is so important, not just for being able to fire a cannon, but really for the lives of everyone on this cannon crew. So for those of you who maybe play a sport, a team sport, or you play an instrument in a band or an orchestra, or maybe you do some sort of musical theater, you've been in a play, you know what it's like to be on some sort of team, in some sort of group, 
your goal, whatever it may be, you can't do it all by yourself. Just like these eight men needed one another. So this teamwork is so important. And just like I'm sure you guys have heard many, many times, practice makes perfect. When these men were not marching or if they were not in a battle, guess what? They were practicing. They were practicing so that when they were in a battle situation, when they were in a very stressful, probably pretty scary situation, they were going to be able to do what they needed to do to keep both themselves and also their fellow cannon crew, their fellow teammates safe. So it's a pretty important job. I would challenge you guys next time you are maybe at a practice, if you play a sport or maybe a rehearsal or if you have band or orchestra in school, uh, look around and just think about how important it is for you to be able to depend on those other people in your group to achieve your goal. And actually, maybe ask yourself if you are a good teammate, if you would be the type of person that those people could count on if you were all an artillery team during the Civil War. Now, tomorrow, again, come back. We're going to talk a little bit more about the actual physics behind the artillery. Don't worry, it won't be like math class. But we are going to have some fun. And of course, check out some of the other videos that we have happening this weekend as we commemorate this 157th anniversary of the battles for Chattanooga. Thanks very much. I'll see you tomorrow.